Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing what would happen if we shine the world's most powerful laser at the moon. And if it doesn't destroy the moon, what would it look like? And how big of a laser would we need to actually destroy the moon? And we won't stop there. Let's see how big of a laser we would need to destroy even the earth or the sun even. So the other day we were viewing the comet Neowise in the sky and my kids couldn't see it. So they asked if I could use a laser to point to it. But that led to a lot of questions. Could you actually see the laser on the surface of the comet? Or if you shined it at the moon, would you be able to see the laser on the moon? So first, let's start off by using my ultra high powered laser and shining it at the moon. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, it's not doing anything. Now it looks like the beam is reaching it. But if you were able to see it from the surface of the moon, you wouldn't be able to see anything actually. So one of the most powerful lasers on Earth was developed by the Department of Defense and mounted on a Boeing 747 and it was used for shooting missiles out of the sky. And it was a megawatt power laser. So now we're going from watts to megawatts. So that's a million times more powerful than the laser that I use. So let's change our power here to one megawatt. Here we go. Three, two, one. And I'm not seeing any effect on the moon still. So this is one megawatt, nothing happening here. Now the world's most powerful laser is actually the confinement beam at the National Ignition Facility and it's used in the Fusion Research Laboratory. It's an ultraviolet laser and it puts out a whopping 500 terawatts. Now this laser is so powerful that when we use it on Earth it only fires for a nanosecond and in that nanosecond, in one billionth of a second, it outputs the energy equivalent to a half a cup of gasoline which is a lot of energy in a nanosecond. Now let's say we were able to output that energy continuously. Well, here's what it would look like shining it at the moon. Okay, let's turn it up to 500 terawatts. Okay, the confinement beam aimed at the moon. Three, two, one. Still nothing. <laughs> you can see we're not raising the temperature of the moon at all. Okay, so that still didn't do anything exciting. But what if we gave a confinement beam to everybody on Earth and told them to shine it at the moon at the same time? Well, first of all, it would destroy the Earth because just the energy of the laser hitting the atmosphere would ignite the Earth and everything on it and explode it. But let's just say that we were able to somehow get all of those lasers pointed at the Earth and had enough energy to do so, which we don't on Earth. Let's see what it would do to the moon. And that's equal to 0.004 yotta watts. A yotta watt is 10 to the 24 watts. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Three, two, one. Hey, we're actually heating it now. Look at the temperature of the moon going up. <laughs> hey, look at that. So just a few hours of shining it on the moon and it's already heating it up. So still we haven't done much to the moon. I mean we've raised the moon to 20 degrees Celsius now so that's pretty warm but it's not going to do here. We need to do a little bit more damage. So let's turn it instead of 0.004 yotta watts, let's turn it to 4. Here we go. <laughs> now look at that. Now the surface of the moon is over 200, 300 degrees Celsius now. Whoa! It's starting to just shoot off plasma now. So we're just turning the surface of the moon into plasma. Oh man, that is awesome. So 
So hitting the moon with this much energy is actually enough to push the moon away from us. There's so much energy in this laser now that it would actually start moving the moon away from the Earth. Now we're at almost a thousand degrees Celsius now, but to really destroy the moon, we're gonna have to go a little bit more. Let's go to 40 yotta watts of power. <laughs> oh, man. Let's go 400 yotta watts. Three, two, one. <laughs> 2,000 degrees Celsius now. So the moon is just a complete plasma now. You can see it just pouring off into space around it. Okay, 4,000 yotta watts. And the moon is gone. Just complete dust now. Okay, let's see at 4,000 yotta watts, let's see what that would do to the Earth. <laughs> Melt the ice caps. Oh, that is awesome. Okay, here's 40,000 yotta watts. Whoa. <laughs> Look how it just pushed the earth away from us. So it heated it up so much that's just the plasma evaporating and shooting away from the Earth. And one more zap. Well, it's this dead rock now. That is crazy. <laughs> so now let's see what this would actually do to the sun. So the sun's at 5,500 degrees Celsius. And we're shooting it here and I don't see any rise in temperature. So this laser completely obliterated the earth. Okay, we're gonna have to get even more powerful than this to do anything to the sun. So one little blast from this obliterated the earth, but it's not doing anything to the sun. Now this is similar to a question that was asked in the book, What If? One of my favorite books by Randall Monroe. And in it, he discusses the different types of strong lasers on Earth from the least powerful to the most powerful laser on Earth and talks about what it would look like if you shined it on the moon. Everybody, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And also you can hit the bell to be notified when my latest video comes out. And check out theactionlab.com for the Action Lab experiment boxes. We have the vacuum chamber box and the self-pouring fluid box. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.